sing. We're going to do Love Came Down Before Friday Night. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to 1111. Whether you're here in person or watching from Facebook, we're so glad you're here. Would you please stand with us and sing for our Lord, our God.
In and out of situations that tug of war and me all day long I struggle for the answers that.
Through his love, the Lord provided a place for us to rest, a place to find the answers in the hour of distress. So there's no to give up in despair, just slip away and breathe his name. Amen. In the presence of the King. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Welcome to this service of worship. Uh, those of you in this house at uh, St. Paul UMC East Campus and those of you worshiping online, we greet you on this first Sunday after Christmas Day. Uh, often called Low Sunday by, uh, by many people because we generally have a little lighter crowd on this day when there seems people start to experience a little bit of Christmas letdown after, after the, you know, the big build-up for Christmas Day and, uh, and after that. But also an opportunity, I think, in my experience, to just experience a, a kind, of, uh, kind of pure form of worship as we gather, uh, gather either uh, in person or online. Welcome. Welcome this day. We want to hear from you, uh, your prayer needs, other things going on in your life. If you're a guest uh, we'd love to hear, hear about you and from you. And if you'll take advantage of our Connect cards online, stpaulos.org slash connect. That's a good way to do that. Uh, we also uh, invite you to, uh, to a time of offering and giving. And you may do that by give.stpaulos.org or through the mail, St. Paul UMC, P.O. Box 909. Uh, in this, this moment, of, uh, of offering and the way we, we do that now. I would remind you in the house, also there's a basket near the door if you'd like to leave an offering on your way out. We give God the thanks. It is always a good and right and joyful thing to give, give him so. Let us pray together this morning. Loving God, we, your people, praise you in our hearts and would with our lives and our whole being. Giving thanks that you are the author and giver of all life and grace, we look to you 
as Lord, praying that you would break anew the bread of life for us in Jesus' name. In these moments, as we yield ourselves to you, giving thanks for for pulling us through this year, and as we anticipate a new one together, we know and give thanks that most of all we are your children, that nothing can separate us from your great love in Jesus Christ. So we pray that we may take hold of that life that you are always extending to us, that we may live and abide in the light of your truth and love, extending that to others, and I'm always mindful of ways you are leading us forward. Our hearts go out to those who are still struggling with illness and unknowns in their lives, whether the coronavirus or from other things, and those who are experiencing hardships and difficulties in this, what is, we tout as the most joyous of seasons. Be with them and strengthen and relieve them from their troubles. Be with all who are working for good in the world on the front lines and the behind lines. And we give you the thanks and the praise this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today we look at a scripture from Luke's gospel that uh, is, is very appropriate for this season. It, it's a follow-up. As you know, Jesus has been born. And then his uh, parents take him to the temple uh, to have him, him blessed. We pick up that in Luke's gospel, Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 35. I invite you to stand as you're able for the reading. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of doves are two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do with, for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Intersections. Things happen at intersections. People and events come together, come together, then they split apart. They converge into forming the intersection, and then at ground zero, after that happens, they diverge, leading off in different directions. Intersections. We take them for granted. We need, we need them to get from one place to another. Uh, we use them every day. But there are times when God is at the crossing, when our, pa- our paths intersect with the divine. And, and doesn't a cross stand for, you know, the intersecting center of the whole universe, that intersection at Good Friday? Make no mistake about it. God surprises us at intersections, at these crossing times, and we're never the same again. The crossing we're looking at today, and the reading from Luke, happens earlier, long before Good Friday's cross. Luke, Luke locates it at the ground zero in the temple, the temple in Jerusalem. So there in the court of the temple, moving Along one path, along one trajectory, through the crowd's noise and bustle, is the Holy Family, Mary and Joseph and the Christ child. And their course is set toward the meeting of a priest, a priest to whom they will take a meager offering, a sacrifice according to the law of Moses. Uh, Not lavish, because they are not people of means. This sacrifice is only what is necessary, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. 
And the family moves through the crowd to accomplish this sacrifice. But also making his way through the sea of people is uh, along another tra- trajectory, another path, is Simeon, old Simeon, righteous and devout Simeon, the man who, for whom it was said he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. The Holy Spirit had revealed to old Simeon that it was time, the fullness of time, for his hopes to be fulfilled. And guided by the Spirit, there in the temple court, uh, those two courses converge, and there is a meeting, there is an intersection, very much of God. Simeon takes the child in the crook of his arms, cradles him, praising God and singing his song. Uh, It's come to be known from the Latin words, the nunc dimittis, which literally means, it's translated, now you depart, because he says, now let us depart. Or other translations, master, now you're dismissing your servant in peace. So here in this intersection, you can feel the weight of the tension. Old Simeon, who is, you know, the tug of the past, prayerfully waiting for God to complete things so so he can be dismissed from his service. And the infant Jesus, the power of God's future, brought to the temple, presented to God for service. But to all bystanders, just a powerless child. One poet said, referred to as the infant the still unspeaking and unspoken word. So this is the tension we have in the temple at at ground zero, the tug of the past and the power of the future intersecting. There is a logic to old Simeon's prayer. You wait for something long enough. You know, you pray for it, you long for it, And when in God's good time it is given, there is this deep sense of completion, a fulfillment, an ending, you know, usually in a good way. Some of us here have waited like Simeon. You know, we have waited for work that is more than just a job, waiting and praying uh, for that fitting place to use our gifts, our real vocation, our real calling from God. And we want to look at this more deeply early into the year uh, as a church as well. And when that is given to you in God's good time, there, there is a sense of completion. That we want to sing a nunc dimittis, let your servant depart in peace. Others wait for a life partner, perhaps years, pray and wait. I've had the experience of gathering with others in a holy place, whether as the pastor presiding or just with others gathering, a holy place set apart for worship or that's made a holy place because of the nature of the gathering, where that intersection of people coming together in there is a couple who have waited for one another for years. And they covenant together in holy marriage And it's like a completion. It's a feeling of completion. We could sing a nuke dimittis at their wedding. Finally, a time to depart in peaceful gratitude. High school graduation. Uh, There's a completion for sure. There's a coming together and a completion. But, you know, who are the people (laughs) usually tearing up during those times? Not usually the young people wearing the mortarboards, right? <laughs> Those parents and, and elders who have seen that young person grow up, the ups and downs to get to this place, and there is a completion, you know, an ending and a beginning, and it's, it is sometimes pretty powerful. And certainly the end of this calendar year for this congregation, no less than you would say for the rest of people throughout the world, We have been waiting, you know, praying for renewal of life. Amen. It's been an enforced kind of waiting, true enough, waiting for when our our lives, our social lives and our work lives and our family lives can resume with the kind of freedom that we may have taken for granted, you know, before. With a kind of robustness, you can go up and shake a person's hand and not even worry about it. When you can resume that without threatening lives. 
Uh, that time will come again, uh, Lee Bond assures me. It will come again, uh, but not without some more time and without some more cost. And, but when it, it will come, that intersection will happen. Will things be exactly the way, the way we were before? Uh, I think uh, that's, that's exciting and a little scary to think about. Maybe not exactly the same all the way around, because that's the way it happens. Regardless, I bet most of you want to say along with me, Simeon's nuke dimittis, let us depart in peace. Let this year depart in peace. <laughs> if, if I can't depart in peace, please let it depart. Uh, so we also feel it. We also, the tug of the past, the sense of things you know, coming together to being completed, a sense of ending, uh, and we can join Simeon in his song. Notice again that Simeon is cradling, cradling in his arms, you know, none other than the Christ child he, as he sings. And I love that image of him holding the baby in his arms, singing uh, in praise joyfully. I love that image. Uh, I'm a singer. That's one gift that God has blessed me with. And so I've enjoyed for years when baptizing an infant uh, to sing the lullaby song, carrying the baby down the aisle, showing the baby off to, to you or the congregation. And the lullaby song is, usually calls the baby by name. Ashley, Ashley, God claims you. God helps you, protects you, and loves you too. And one of the verses that we sing, we this day do all agree, a child of God you'll always be. Another one uh, says, we are here to say this day that we will help you on your way. Ashley, Ashley, God claims you, God helps you, protects you, and loves you, too. I pulled the name Ashley, not just out of the hat, but uh, I actually baptized an Ashley back in the church in Bay St. Louis years ago. But she was not an infant, she was a very, a very lovely young woman. And uh, there, was a, there was a funny moment when her mother came up to me afterwards and said, well, you didn't, you didn't carry Ashley in your arms and sing to her. And... Uh, which was funny because, you know, that might cause a little stir even in Bay St. Louis. Uh, but uh, the point is that it applies to us regardless of age. God claims you. God helps you, protects you, and loves you too. And here is, here is Simeon uh, holding the promise of God, now in flesh appearing, the power of God's future. At this intersection, there is also birth, something new. Good news, God's salvation. There is a tension here, God, uh, Simeon, Simeon holding the Lord's Messiah. Completion when things come together, yes. And now the word spoken has been spoken in the virgin's ear and Christ is born and hope is born and there's enough light for all of the world. See, the intersection, the tug of the past, the power of God's future here in our midst. For us... You know, our calendar year is now coming to an end. But in the midst of, in the mere midst are all the, the new people in Christ uh, that have come into our lives, in our church, in our lives. I invite you to think back through the year of those intersections. On an everyday level, you know, God brings certain people into our lives sometimes for years, sometimes only briefly or for a certain season, but our lives intersect. There's something holy there. And we recognize that here is the power of God in Christ as well, in those intersections where God has worked or spoken. We've experienced forgiveness, the gift of the Spirit, new birth. We have seen those welcomed into Christ's church and uh, Somehow through it all, we, we have been sharing in his death and resurrection, even through all this that we have been living through. And in these things, haven't our eyes, haven't our eyes seen the salvation of the Lord's Messiah? Um, Jesus has come to give us second birth, a gift freely given to us all. Now the world has a version of this a version of completion and new beginnings. It is counterfeit. But for a lot of people, it is a source of hope, of their hope. Uh, 
some of you, few of you may remember, or be old enough to remember the pub publisher's clearinghouse sweepstakes. <laughs> It's like a lot of things that's been adapted over the years with uh, new, you know, newer technology and the way the world has changed. It's done mainly online now, and I think winners are announced on NBC. But in the old days, you would receive through the mail a special letter uh, with your name on it to enter into this drawing for the publisher's clearinghouse it would, uh, sweepstakes. It would be advertised on network TV and everything for a drawing of the grand prize. Now, of course, the odds of winning it were like 1 in 1.7 billion, but, you know, my parents would take their envelope and they would, you know, religiously prepare it and send it back. I mean, they were smart people. They knew what the odds were, but it was just something fun to do. Later, I got my own envelope with my name on it, and I did the same thing. Uh, that letter addressed to you supplied its own, your own distinctive press release. That is, you wouldn't have to even think of the words to say if you have, happened to be that one in 1.7 billion. It was already written for you if you won. Uh, that $10 million next month that you were going to receive, you wouldn't be at a loss for words. I don't know if other lotteries or drawings do this, but they, they did. They even supplied the words to put in your mouth. You, you said that you were stunned. You said that this was a, a dream of a lifetime all served up for you in this press release for that big day. You know, about the only thing you needed to add maybe was the nuke dimittis. Now that would be a fine statement to the world, you know, for us new multimillionaires. Now let your servant depart with all these winnings. <laughs> so here we are with Simeon on this Lord's Day, this last Sunday of 2020, at his intersection with the infant Jesus, the tug of the past, you know, versus the power of God's future. But we don't stop there. The movement continues. The intersection opens up in two directions, two directions into that future. And the reason for this split in the future and future directions is given in Simeon's song. In the coming of Jesus, God strips away the disguises of all people. The inner thoughts of many will be revealed. Simeon says. Simeon prophesies to Mary, God's revelation in Jesus will disclose our own hearts as well. The Lord's Messiah is now revealed and our own, our own inner thoughts are uncovered. And from this intersection, there are two, per, two paths that diverge. You know, one, is, one path is the course of the world, self-centered, resentful, playing it safe, indifferent to those in need, whether they be the poor or others, the way of the unjust. The other path, those who follow the Lord's Messiah from this place, this intersection, this ground zero of meeting, is humble, not afraid to take risks that God's calling us to, filled with compassion, Servants of those in need, the way of the just. Two movements, two movements from this place of meeting, all because the inner thoughts of many have been revealed. They have been revealed and they will be. There is also a personal prophecy for Mary. A sword will pierce your own soul too, Simeon tells her. He reveals that cross-shaped place, right? Right? Through Mary's heart, but also through our world, that sword will pass through Christ's church, through our, our own souls. Now, God knows we're not perfect. I mean, literally, God knows we're, we're not perfect. And sometimes we're, we're basically good-intentioned people who sometimes do un, unwise or bad, or unloving things. Sometimes maybe we're not even that. But it is also true that, that from this intersection, there are only two ways into the future. The way of the just whose hearts are open, and the way of the unjust whose hearts are hardened. There's a classic prayer that begins, uh, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, from you no secrets are hid. 
And uh, that can feel like good news or bad news, depending on the kind of day you're having, maybe. Now that the inner thoughts are revealed, though the issue is forced, a a decision needs to be made. Which way for us from that intersection? We cannot remain here, you know, at ground zero. Perhaps Simeon would agree that it is now time for prayer, as once more we are confronted with a choice. I'm sure he would. So let's end today with prayer, that prayer of old with a few things inserted appropriately as we pray together, as we pray together about the path God calls us to from that intersection and all the ones that await us in the new year. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration and leading and guiding of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, that we may find ourselves on the path of the just, and in all our living and loving and dying and rising in you, may we worthily magnify your name. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen.
forward from this intersection into the new year, following the path of the one who is just and loving in all his ways. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.